Hey guys, Keith from Kegland, and we're talking about this new type of uh, Everbarrier beer and gas line. This type of tubing is really handy for lots of different sort of applications. Um, up until now, we only really had this Everbarrier um, opaque uh, beer and gas line available, in which case uh, most people use the same line for their beer and gas. Now that's certainly something you can still keep doing if you really wanted to, but we got a lot of requests from customers saying it would be nice if we had some other different color of gas line so we could determine which one was my beer, which one was the gas inside my kegerator and stuff like that. So we brought out this red color uh, uh, Everbarrier line as well. Essentially it's still food grade, still has the same multi-layer properties as you know our standard Everbarrier beer line and so does this black as well. Both of them have that high oxygen barrier property because we use multi-layer in the way that these are extruded. Um, but this one is perfect for gas, making it really easy to identify which ones are which, so you never mix up or accidentally connect your, you know, beer line to your gas post or vice versa. So that's a really handy product to have. This particular one is an eight by four millimeter ID. Um, so fairly high pressure rating on that one as well. The other thing is in the black, we call this one light shield. And the reason why we really were keen on the black in particular is because the black's really important when you've got other forms of damaging light to beer, or you're just simply using the beer line outside. So I've actually brought in a number of different black light shield tubes uh, or Everbarry tubes as well. So in the uh, black, we've actually got the quarter inch, we've got the eight millimeter, or so I should say quarter inch, which is 6.35 millimeter OD, the eight millimeter, which is 5 sixteenths, and then we've got the nine and a half millimeter. Uh, look, some people loosely call this 10 mil, but it's nine and a half technically, uh, which is the three eighths uh, diameter. So it fits all the range of those duo type fittings respectively. Um, we also recently just started to bring out this real big fat boy here as well, uh, which is our new 20 millimeter Everbarrier tubing. This is sold on a large roll like this. So um, I'm gonna talk about some applications to this large one later on in the video. But ultimately the reason for this is because firstly, if you get beer lines, which are somehow somehow exposed in the uh, into the environment, like uh, in, in the sun and stuff like that, uh, the damaging light can really skunk your beer really quickly and turn the flavor pretty nasty. So it's called light struck beer or skunking. A lot of people use that term. And although a lot of people think that the most damaging part of light is the ultraviolet, it's not quite correct. It's actually the violet or visible spectrum, like just basically below the blue light, you've got violet light. Um, and in that violet range, that is the most um, skunking, uh, has the highest skunking potential to basically damage your beer. So we really felt like some type of, uh, you know, light blocking beer line in particular was really important for those things like jockey boxes, or if you've got like a tap system using outside for a party or something like that, even with only a few minutes sitting out in the sun, that beer line, which is uh, sitting out in the sun, getting copping that violet light will damage and become skunk really quickly. And it just smells horrendous. So we're gonna do some tests later on the video, comparing some beer line and beer, which is sat in the sun for as little as five minutes. And then we're gonna see if we can tell the difference by tasting that beer. Look, the other benefit of using this type of light shield is in the outer barrier, we don't just block the visible light, we also block the ultraviolet, which is good for other applications. So if you've got beer line which is sitting outside, you still wanna block ultraviolet light so you don't damage the line itself. So if you get this uh, clear opaque and left this outside, I actually have done that. I've actually used this outside in my garden for about a year and it did a, a start to get like slight hairline cracks and stuff like that because the light penetrates into the beer line, bounces around, essentially damages the polymer. Um, but what you've got is this one, we actually put in the outside sheath of the beer line, um, we put like a UV blocker. So basically it makes the line resistant to UV so you can use it outdoors for extended periods of time um, without worrying about it degrading the pressure holding capacity uh, or cracking and stuff like that. So um, that means you can also use the beer line for other applications. We have had a lot of people start using the duo type fittings and also a lot of our lines for things like garden plumbing or misters and stuff like that. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how you can set that up later on the video as well. Anyway, let's get stuck into it and let's do some testing and see if skunking is really a thing. So these are the two test rigs I'm gonna use. Now, this one here is our standard Everbarrier. I've just got a ball lock disconnect. I've pushed the tube in there and then got the, uh, 
um, the little Bronco tap on there. So nothing very special. I'm using the eight millimeter by, by four millimeter ID. So this actually has the thickest wall section of any of our ever barrier tubing. Um, the four mil by eight mil has quite a thick wall cross section. So you'd think that this would be favorable in the fact that, you know, it's got the thicker wall cross section. Surely it's gonna block a little bit more light, but we're gonna put that up against this ever barrier black uh, or light shield product. So once again, I've got one and a half meters of four mil by eight mil OD, and I'm basically gonna put this Bronco tap into this duo type fitting, and I've made this test rig. So I'm gonna fill these up with beer, sit them in the sun, and let's see how we go and see if we can, um, you know, notice the difference between one beer and the other. Okay, this is my relatively basic test rig here. I've already charged this one full of beer, and I'll just show you what I'm gonna do. I've got a keg of pale ale, so I'm just gonna clip this on here like that and run enough beer through the line that it's all full of beer with not too many bubbles in there. Okay, so I've got that one charged with beer and this one charged with beer and ready to go. All right, now I've got these two beer lines. I'm just gonna sit them in the sun like that and I'm gonna leave these for five minutes. So they're not gonna be out here for very long, but I'm starting the stopwatch now. We'll come back in five minutes and let's see the results. Okay, so that's been five minutes. So now we're gonna taste the beer or mainly smell the beer because that's where skunking really is very, very obvious. So I'm gonna basically open this up. Actually, what I'll do, I'm just gonna undo the cap off this ball lock disconnect. Whoop, there we go, bit of beer sprays out. And I've gotta be careful not to waste it because uh, I've only got a small amount of beer. Essentially, if you look at the um, four by eight millimeter beer lines, uh, one and a half meters is only about 20 mils or less than 20 mils actually. Um, so I've got not a lot of beer for this test because it's what's in the beer line. Um, so I've got that one in this class to the right. And then I've also got this one on the left. Okay, just take the pressure off that one. And let's undo the cap of this one here. And let's drain that beer line out like this into that glass. Okay, that's kind of most of it. Just want to make sure all of that comes out here. Okay, and I'll put that cap back on the ball lock disconnect. Um, all right, so look, it really probably should be a blind tasting if I'm gonna do this correctly, but look, for the sake of the experiment, I'm just gonna try them myself. Yeah, wow immediately i don't have to taste it it's like i bring that glass to my nose and it is immediately obvious this one stinks like sulfur in fact um just to show you that's the case i'm going to bring in somebody else i've got brady in the other room here i'm going to bring him in and i'll put a mic on him and he'll smell these for the first time i obviously know what's in each glass and i'm going to show him the results and see what he thinks Okay, so I've got Brady over here. He's gonna come and have a crack. These are the two glasses. So I want you to smell the two of these. Now, one's been in the sun for five minutes. Yep. Uh, same beer, one's been just poured straight out of that beer line a few moments ago. So, you know, the sat in the glass. Look, I'm sorry they're warm. <laughs> oh, that's all right for me. <laughs> but look, have a sniff. Yeah. And I'm not gonna tell you which one's which, but okay. yeah, see what you think. Been a little bit tight on the pause key. <laughs> yeah, I know, sorry. It's just what was in the beer line. So there's only 20 mils, as I was saying just a second ago, in the beer line. So yeah, they're very, very uh, thrifty pours here. All right. Oh, it's night and day. Yeah. It smells like Stella. It's gotta be the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That is a good point of reference, yeah. So um, Stella is definitely one of those beers a lot of people sort of pick up on a little bit of sulfur uh, as well. Yeah. And the skunk the kind skunkiness, of definitely. In. Yeah, it's so clear. Like, I, it's, it's, the moment it came out of the beer line, almost the aroma that puffed off there. It just got it straight away. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing what five minutes, literally, that's all it was, five minutes in the sun does to skunk beer. Now, daylight is obviously some of the worst light because the lumens from the sun is just so yeah. much brighter than internal light. But look, I'm going to do this test again just using internal lights. I'm going to use this studio lighting and we're going to see if we can sense any. See if we do the same. Well. Get your light shield. Yep. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so I've finished the testing for this sort of indoor studio lighting. Now I have a lot of lighting in here. It's about six big floodlights and stuff like that. So I've got this sample here, which is the black light shield uh, sample. As you would expect, can't smell anything. Now I've actually had this one sitting in this studio now for 45 minutes. So this is basically quite a long test. There's no skunking whatsoever. 
But then what I've done on this side, I've actually got, uh, you know, so this is the one in the opaque beer line. I've got two samples here and one here, which has been sitting in the room for 10 minutes. And look, to be fair, the 10 minute one, I can't really, I don't think I can notice much difference, to be honest with you. Maybe an ever so slightly marginal skunking on that one. And then if I, um, yeah, on this one, this is the one that's been, you know, in the ambient light here for 45 minutes and I can start to, and I can start to get a little bit of that skunking coming through on this one. So look, my advice here is, look, in indoor lighting, I'd say, look, definitely if it's sitting for any length of time in indoor lighting like this, let's say you've got a glass door on your kegerator. Look, firstly, I think that's a bad idea. But like, if you've got a glass door on your kegerator, look, I'd probably recommend this just because the length of time that you're gonna have light coming through that kegerator door, you're probably gonna get some skunking, especially on that first glass where the beer's been sitting in the line for a while. For indoors, look, for just sort of opening and closing the fridge, I probably wouldn't be too concerned about skunking indoors, generally speaking, for minimal, you know, short exposure. But certainly for longer exposure, if it's for, you know, longer than 10 minutes, I would say, definitely in indoor lighting, skunking is certainly a thing. And definitely outdoors, 100%, even for very light exposure, even if it's only a few minutes, I would 100% say, look, go the black ever barrier beer line and protect yourself from that nasty skunking smell. It is so noticeable when you get that skunking. And if you do this test at home, I'd love for you to put comments below um, and give us your thoughts. Cause I feel like when I smell these, they're so different, especially with the outdoor testing. So you definitely wanna get some type of protection from that violet light. Now, another application is irrigation and stuff like that. Look, I made actually a home misting system and also some garden uh, water plumbing with these types of push-in fittings, and they work fantastic. Um, that's one of the reasons why we also brought in this larger tubing, often for garden watering, irrigation, or even compressed air. Uh, we use this for compressed air in our factory here as well. Um, you need fairly high flow rate. So this larger Ever Barrier 16 millimeter OD by uh, 11 mil ID gives you very, very high flow rate. So um, if I was to use something like this quarter inch um, and I had misters set up, you might find that the first few jets come out really strong mist. And then as you get to the 10th or 11th jet, like they're really, really slowing down and you might only get a bit of a dribble. Anyway, all these fittings are available on the website too. So for instance, I've got this, uh, yeah, 16 mil. I've also got these new 16 mil fittings. These are an absolute bargain that we bought in China. I can't believe how cheap these are, but these are a PPR, so polypropylene random. So these also have a UV stabilizing agent in the fitting itself. They use quite a lot in the uh, solar hot water industry and stuff like that around the world. But anyway, this particular fitting, you can push straight into this uh, this fitting here and great for compressed air or let's say irrigation or something like that. And then you've also got these, a number of them have these stainless steel threaded uh, parts here. So because they're stainless steel, don't have to worry about rust or anything like that. And then they can also couple with our duo tight uh, fittings as well. So I've got the half inch thread. So I've got half inch down to quarter inch. So what I can do in this instance is I can set this up with the 16 mil trunk line and then have multiple different lines going off down to quarter inch. So I have high flow rate. And really in this type of setup, you wouldn't really wanna put more than about say, you know, eight or nine misters per you know, quarter inch tube. Otherwise the flow through these small quarter inch tubes is just not enough to feed that many jets. Um, but what you do is just uh, screw it on there like that. No thread tape required, because these also have a uh, face seal against that face of the thread. So look, within seconds you can plumb something like that together. I've actually got my internal courtyard um, in the city and basically have this overhead. So it basically comes on with a timer and the mist just sprays out. So we've also got some solenoid valves on our website. I'm not sure if you've seen those quarter inch solenoids. They're ideal for this. So you can put a solenoid in line here and then also hook up your own wiring um, if you want to sort it out that way. The other thing I should say is we've got these misting jets and other irrigation fittings now also in the plumbing section of our website, just because so many people are using these for um, outdoor plumbing. And when you buy these fittings, there's a few different types. There's ones for misting. There's also ones that just drip. Uh, and there's also ones that spray as well. So you can get a selection of different 
uh, types of these uh, quarter inch push-in fittings. And if you're using them for gardening, um, you may wanna use this spike here. So these spikes also come with these fittings as an, in a pack of 10 like this, in a baggy, baggy of 10. And then these clip onto the base and then you can just stick that into the soil in your garden. And then, you know, whether it's a dripper or spray or mister, you can sort of set them up like that. So look, really handy for lots of other applications. Um, yeah, in our workshop here, we use it for compressed air, use these PPR fittings. These PPR fittings can handle hundreds of PSI. So it look really ideal for very high, you know, air pressures and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously with a half inch thread, most of the, you know, pneumatic fittings and stuff like that will attach to a half inch thread as well. So look, really awesome options for lots of other, um, you know, stuff you can use all these plumbing fittings in. I should also say we're doing a duo type generation two fitting where the all new duo type generation two fittings are made from a UV resistant poly ketone rather than the previous um, acetal that the original fittings are made of. So also, once again, all those new duo type Gen 2 fittings have this ability to be used outside for extended periods as well. That's a wrap guys. Hope you really enjoy using the new Everbarrier Red and the new Everbarrier Light Shield beer and gas line or tubing in general. Um, if you guys want us to make any other fittings or new duo type fittings and stuff like that, put it in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. We really do listen to our customers. A lot of these new products are really around because of requests from guys like yourself. So I'd love to hear from you. Definitely join our Facebook home group community group, bottom right hand corner. Um, also subscribe to this YouTube channel. That'd be really appreciated, helps us a lot. The other thing is click on the bell icon when you subscribe, that way you get notified when new videos land. All right, that's it and see you guys next time. Bye.